SOAR is the Security Operations Automation Response. So within Logpoint, what we're able to do, we're able to detect an event, we're able to flag that event, we can then re request an endpoint to go and take action because of what we've seen. So Logpoint supports vendors, products, and actions. Let's jump right into products. Inside products, um, what happens if, if a customer was running something like a crowd strike? So let's go and look. So you can see that they're running a crowd strike, in this case, crowd strike Falcon, Falcon X, crowd strike F Falcon. You can have that as a product. And then there are actions within that product that you can actually leverage. If we get down to those actions, just briefly show ahead here because it is relevant to understand. I will search for CrowdStrike. There's CrowdStrike Falcon. When we would like to um, interact with an endpoint, we can contain the endpoint, endpoint um, actions. We can get a behavior, lift the containment. Remember, when I say we, Logpoint sends a notification based upon API coverage to that responding endpoint if it's running a CrowdStrike, maybe a Carbon Black, one of those other types, and then they would go and perform that action. Okay, so now we understand that. Now we understand how Logpoint interacts. Let's jump right into this. Logpoint refers to our SOAR, implement our SOAR implementation as playbooks. A playbook is something that we detect, then various steps happen. So what's very big at the moment, very prevalent for every single organization is ransomware. So here we have a playbook for ransomware. So if I click on this playbook for ransomware, I'll try to zoom in a little bit so we can take a look at that. First of all, we are presented with a trigger, right? So the trigger kicks in and the trigger then says what's going to happen. So in this case, we've had a trigger type, which is, which is a log point sim incident. After that, we have a query where we'd like to query what's going on. Next thing, we have a for each loop. So this is interesting because most times when organizations receive a phishing email or a phishing attack, it doesn't go to one person. It goes to like everyone in finance. So we cannot just scan one occurrence. We have to loop through every single time we detected whatever it is in this case. The next one you'll see here is I've got a sub, a sub, my next one is the ransomware investigation, which happens to be a sub playbook. So let's go jump into that sub, sub playbook. Here it is on top here. In the sub playbook, getting a little more, a little more complex, not too much though at the moment. The trigger now is a playbook event, right? So I'm receiving this notification from a playbook. I'm now starting to check. I've got a trigger for a hash, check the file reputation. Um, is it ransomware I'm actually questioning on? You'll notice here, this is check the file reputation VT. This is actually sending it to virus total. We're looking for a certain percentage to come back and so on and so on and so on. I won't go through all this. I have another one I'd like to show. So that's a very typical playbook situation for us to detect something that is completely anomalous, right? Another one we see that's very, you know, we're getting a lot of press at the moment is a phishing attack. So phishing attacks tend to be when a user either receives an email or they are redirected to a website that looks like something else. They click on something and it is malicious in nature. Now, this is going to be a little more complex because we need to do a little more. So the first thing is you'll see here that we have, again, like normal, our trigger event. In this case, the trigger also comes from a playbook. And we start off at the first one. Now, what I'd like to make everyone understand is that all these processes are happening in parallel. So can you imagine if you had a security team and the security team said, OK, 10 users each received an email with four attachments. That's 40 attachments that need to be scanned. So off they go and they send 40 attachments off to VirusTotal. Well, we can do that in an API. We can send it to VirusTotal. In parallel, we can send it to the Cuckoo Sandbox. So all these different items, as I said, I'm not going to go through each one of them. Each one of these, we can check the domain reputation, all happening in parallel. If things succeed, if they don't succeed. So here, we check the URL. Is the URL, is it actually malicious? So we can come on to this, we can say, if it's malicious, don't continue or do continue. You notice all these if and else. You get all the way down through until the end. And, you know, once we're at the end, if everything's fine and nothing's checked out, you finish this process. But we may need to isolate the endpoint, in which case we will tell that to the technology that is being chosen, as I mentioned before, be that a CrowdStrike, Carbon Black, whatever the case is, and the playbook will automatically, without any user in intervention, 
or with user intervention. It depends exactly how our customers wish to configure that. Go and isolate the machine or allow it on the network. Now, everybody always comes back to us and says, you know, what are all the applications you support and everything else? We have an entire list up on our, up on our, on, on our website of all the applications we integrate with. We can communicate with a Cisco router. We can communicate with various EDR platforms to give us the control to make our customers at ease regarding the situation. <music>